Today we're going to learn about another shape. This one is called an ellipse, and this will also be a two-part series. The first part is simply ellipses that are centered around 0, 0, and the second part will uh, teach us how to shift those uh, to be centered around any point we choose. So what's an ellipse? An ellipse is a special curve such that all the points on the curve, if we measure their distance to two special points that are called focus points or foci or foci if you want to talk plural. If you measure the distance from any point on the curve to those focus points and add them, add up those distances, it's always going to be the same. Uh, for instance, maybe this curve was drawn um, so that each one of these is um, a total of eight centimeters away from the focus point. Right Here's four plus four. Uh, or right here, maybe this is one centimeter, but this is seven centimeters, and so the total is still eight. So that's the special defining feature of what an ellipse is. A couple other important points. Um, so ellipses are always a little bit longer in one direction than they are in the other direction, and so um, we say that the line that goes right through the center of the center of the ellipse uh, and the focus points and so forth, we call that the major axis. And uh, where the major axis intersects the ellipse, those two edge points, the furthest points away from the center, those are called the vertices. And then the line that goes uh, perpendicular to that goes through the center uh, and uh, touches the ellipse at the closest points. Those, uh, that's called the minor axis, and those intersection points are called covertices. And then uh, probably the most important feature of when we're measuring things and so forth, we always measure from the center of the ellipse. And you can find that by simply taking the midpoint of the covertices or the midpoint of the focuses or the midpoint of the vertices. Now, uh, the other day we learned about a circle and we saw that the general equation for a circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. If we simply divide everything in that by r squared, over here, r squared divided by r squared would equal 1, and the other two fractions would simply be x squared over r squared and y squared over r squared. Now, if those numbers are the same number, then we'll get a circle. But if you allow one of these numbers to be different, bigger or smaller than the other, that gives you an ellipse. And so, um, I like to think of this number that's underneath x as the horizontal radius um, and the number that's underneath y as the vertical radius, um, but most textbooks will call those things uh, specifically letters a and b. And so this is the formula you'll see for the general ellipse that's centered around 0, 0. Again, think of a as a horizontal radius and b as a vertical radius. So here's uh, an example. How do we draw an ellipse uh, that's uh, given by this equation, x squared over 4, y squared over 25, and also where are the foci, those focus points that we measure things from. So in order to uh, do this, uh, we ought to think about uh, the fact that x squared is divided by 4. 4 is in the spot where our horizontal radius squared is, and so that means our horizontal radius is 2. Uh, the vertical radius is going to be 5, because 5 squared is 25. And so uh, to draw this, let's uh, pull up an ellipse here. We're going to uh, have this be centered around 5, 5. And its horizontal radius is 2. And so we'll go out to the 2s. And its vertical radius is 5. So we'll go up and down to the 5s. And so there would be the ellipse that would be drawn by that particular equation. Now, if we want to find the focus points, uh, we need a new equation. And that new equation is the focal length equation. So to determine the focal length, uh, that's C in this equation, we either solve the equation a squared minus b squared equals c squared, or b squared minus a squared equals c squared whichever one is doable, because uh, we have to do big minus small in order to make that work. And so in this particular equation, our b squared is bigger than our a squared, and so we'll be using this formula here, b squared minus a squared equals c squared. And so let's uh, 
write that in there. And so uh, we'll start filling in some numbers and seeing uh, what we get for a focal length. So b squared, that was our number four. And a, I'm sorry, b squared was 25. And a squared was the four. And so if we subtract those, we get that uh, c squared is 21. And that means our focal length is the square root of 21. And so square root of 21, let me grab my calculator here a moment. Square root of 21 is about 4.58. And so what that means is that the focal points are 4.58 units away from the center. And so let me uh, get in a shape here. I'll make this really small and how about pink? There we go, pink. So our focal length is going to be 4.5 units away from the center. And so 4.5 units away from the center would put us up here at almost the vertex. And there's another one that is 4.58 units below. So right about down here. So there's our focus points. Let's look at another example. So in this particular equation, um, we have uh, a ellipse that's given by this equation. This equation doesn't quite look the same as we have here. We've got uh, 18x squared, 32y squared, and this big 288 in the spot where there should be a one. And so first thing we'll need to do is to try to clean this equation up to put it in this format so we can actually see the radius and all that. And so I think we should divide by 288 to make that a one. So if we do that, 288 divided by 288 would become a one. And those other equations, uh, 32 over 288, that reduces to one ninth and 18 over 288, that reduces to 1 16th. And so now we've got the same graph, but this equation is written in a format that we can actually read off what the radius and the um, what vertical radiuses are. So now to actually graph it, let's uh, look at the horizontal radius. So 16 is in the spot where a squared is, and so that means a is four. And 9 is in the spot where b squared is, so that means b is 3. And so if we want to draw this ellipse, again, it's centered at 0, 0. And it has a horizontal radius of 4. And so I'll stretch this out to be 1, 2, 3, 4. Same thing over here. And it's got a vertical radius of 3, which it's pretty close to right now. Now, how do we find the foci? So let's uh, get rid of some of these things a moment. Um, actually, I want that equation still. And then everything else we can get rid of. So once again, uh, the equation that we're going to be working with for focal length is um, either a squared minus b squared equals c squared or b squared minus a squared equals c squared. In this case, the a is bigger than the b, and so we're going to use this version of the equation. So let's uh, write that a moment. We need a squared minus b squared equals c squared, and we can start putting in some numbers. a squared is 16 in this problem, and b squared was 9. And so if we subtract those, we get 7. And that means c is the square root of 7. And let's see here, square root of 7 is about 2.6. And so now we can go about drawing the um, focus points. Let's make this pink again and really small. And uh, the focus points are always on the wider of the two axes. And so this time they're going to be side to side uh, instead of up and down. And we need to find the center and go left or right 2.6 units. 
So here's the center, one, 2.6 units would put us about here. And the other focus point is one, 2.6 about here. So here is a problem where we need to write an equation for an ellipse. And so this time they've told us where some of the vertices and covertices are. And so why don't we take a moment and plot those a second. So 0, 07 would be this point up here and uh, 6, 0 would be over here. And then 0, negative 7 is down here. And uh, negative 6, 0 is here. And so the ellipse that we have is this guy. And um, how are we going to write an equation for that? Well, um, to write an equation, let's use a template. So the template is x squared over something squared plus y squared over something squared. And in this uh, first blank underneath x squared, we put the horizontal radius squared. And so that would be, uh, we said that was 6, right? From 0 over to 6. So I'll put a 6 there. And the vertical radius would be up 7, and so we'll put a 7 here. And you could leave your answer like that if you want to emphasize the radiuses, um, or uh, a lot of times people will actually multiply that out and write it as uh, 36 and 49, and that would be okay too. So, one last example. What if I wanted to draw an ellipse and completely fill an 8 by 10 sheet of paper? Um, where should I put the focus points? And a little trick that you can use to draw an ellipse is if you put a piece of string um, from one focus point to the next, that's a little bit longer, it's the right length, um, then what you can do is you can put your pen in that and kind of trace it all the way around and form an ellipse. And so the question is how long of a piece of string should we use and where should we put that focus points so that we completely fill this um, the circle. So to do that, um, what I want to do is uh, bring a little x, y axis here, just kind of put it right in the middle. And um, if this is an 8 by 10 sheet of paper, that means it's 8 inches wide. And so that means we need to go out to a 4 side to side. And if it's 10 inches tall, that means we go up half of 10 is 5 units up. And so I want an ellipse that is um, got a radius of 4 and a height of 5, right? This is the ellipse I would like to be able to draw. So let me first write an equation for that. And so uh, to do that, I'll pull out my formula. And the horizontal radius is supposed to be a 4. And the vertical radius should be a 5. Now that I have the um, equation for the ellipse that I want, I can use this equation and the focal length equation to figure out where the focus points need to be. And so in this case, the b squared value is bigger than the a squared. So I'm going to use b squared minus a squared equals c squared. And uh, if I put some numbers in here, uh, b squared is 5 squared or 25. And a squared is 4 squared. If I do those subtractions, 25 minus 16 is c squared. 25 minus 16 happens to be um, 9, which has a nice square root, right? You take the square root of that and you get 3. And so that means my two focus points have to be 3 units away from the center. And so if I wanted to go about actually making this, I would find the center, probably by folding it in half two different ways. And then I would measure 3 inches up from the center and put... Um, a circle there or a piece of tape there probably. I'll tape one end of my string there and then on the other side I'll go three units down. Should put me at about here. So now that we figured out where the focus points need to be, now we have to figure out how long of a string do I need to be able to tape to these focus points so that I can perfectly draw out the ellipse. If my string is too short then if I try to draw all the way around um, I, it won't fill the page. And if it's too big, then it will go off the page. So how long does it need to be? 
Well, uh, to do that, let's uh, pull in a piece of string here and say I want it to go out and then be able to reach the other focus point down here. And so in the most extreme case, if I'm farthest away, um, I'll have to go another two inches up to get to the edge of the piece of paper. And then I'll have to go back two plus three plus another three. Um, that would be a total of eight inches. And so the two inches out, the eight inches back, that means I need a piece of string that's 10 inches long. If I cut a piece of string that's exactly 10 inches long and put my pen at the very end there, then as I trace this around, because the string has to always be 10 inches long, I'll be a total of 10 inches away from both focus points, and that will end up tracing out this ellipse perfectly. So I would encourage you to give it a try. Let's see if you can find an eight by 10 sheet of paper. Uh, put two pieces of tape three inches up from the center on either end, find a 10 inch piece of string and try to draw out a perfect ellipse. If you do, um, put a picture of it in the comments or email me and uh, I'd love to see it. Thanks for watching.